Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network and prepare to be educated about the unknown. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday, and welcome back to another great episode of the Historically Haunted Show on the Paranormal King Radio Network. I'm your host, Adam, the historian ghost hunter, back with another great week. I know last week uh, it was just me kind of blabbering about myself. The week before was off for Easter, but I'm back with an all-star guest. I say that to about all my guests, but this time I swear I mean it. This one's um, someone I've been following for a while, someone um, I admire. I think a lot of you even know uh, her in the scene. She's um, a head medium and the afterlife researcher for ParanormalWarehouse.com. That's a big outfit. Um, she's been featured on a lot of different network shows, A&E and all that good stuff, Travel Channel. Um, but she also does a lot of, uh, of, of, of under-the-radar stuff, anointed through Grace Incorporated, stuff like that. She's based out of New York. She's also the house medium and tour guide for the Hinsdale House. You guys know Danny out there in Upper New York. Uh, enough stalling. You guys want to hear about my guest, uh, Chelsea Gill. Welcome aboard. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing excellent, excellent. Um, this is cool. This is a long time coming. You're one of the ones I've been following for a while, and uh, I didn't want to hit you off to be one of my first, first guests, but I'm glad to get the chance now to kind of rap with you about some stuff, because you're a busy girl, am I right? <laughs> you get a lot. I am, but I'm honored to be on tonight, so thank you so much for having me. Oh, that's killer. I appreciate that. Um, trying to get my name out there, too, uh, in the field, and, and just be down, to, trying to find the down-to-earth ones. I'm not looking for ego ones and uh you're you're one of the ones on the radar when it comes to that because you definitely don't toot your horn but you're doing so much good stuff um i just gotta say right off the bat yeah i'm just impressed like your credentials are just out of out of the out of the out of the zone here how did you get hooked up with danny in the hinsdale house if you don't mind me asking right off oh god so dan and i go back about six years um we connected on social media um, he lives about half hour from me, give or take. And I saw he was into the paranormal. And since I was little, my mom and I did a lot with the paranormal. We'd go to haunted locations, um, test it out. And with me being a ninth generation, um, we kind of just want to test the waters. And, um, I reached out to him and that's how I got into Statler Hotel. Um, that's been featured on, um, a few different TV shows, um, cause he led tours there. And then uh, we just became best friends. Um, so we got hooked up. He then bought the Hinsdale house. Um, so it's six years and counting for a friendship. And I'm grateful for him every single day. Wow. That's very cool. Yeah, he's, he's good people. And like I said, which uh, preach show in the green room, so to speak, we we're talking about it. And I was saying how just the historical features and the restoration project you guys are doing right now for that. Um, before we get any further, is do you want to name drop where people can to donate or, or to, to help out? Uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah, you can go to danielclass.com or the haunted um, and you can do just a one time donation or you can become a Patreon. And all money um, that is into the donation and Patreon go right to the Hinsdale Restoration Project. Um, tours that are led there as well, um, proceeds go right back to Hinsdale. Um, all of us are volunteers there, which we adore. Um, cause they're really trying to restore it back to the 1970s era, um, which is when the Danny family was last there, um, for those that, you know, do know about the house. Um, and you know, it's very difficult to kind of keep up on an old farmhouse, um, and especially yeah. kind of keeping it into seventies, you know, um, and it's, especially in upstate New York with the winters and stuff. It's the yes. weather. Is really what takes oh beating, my God. You know I mean? Yes. It gets super cold and where Hinsdale is, it's in the mountain. 
so they get pounded with snow. Um, yeah. So I can have green grass where I'm at, and they have a foot of snow. Um, no kidding. So wow. it's yeah, yeah, it's you know it's definitely crazy, um, but we're grateful for all the donations. So please, if you wish to kind of give back, you know, DanielClass.com or TheHintelHouse.com, and you know, you can donate, and you know, we hope to have you guys there if you haven't been there. Oh, I love that. Um, I know a little bit about, you know me, I'm the, I like to do my research. I know a little bit about it, but you guys got to find out for yourself. I haven't been there yet. I know Chris Sanders uh, my friend, and a couple people I know have been, um, and they talk highly of it. Um, actually, Nicole Gaspar, who's going to show here uh, on Wednesday nights, she asked a question for you real quick. She says, has anyone ever gotten hurt during the tours there? Hurt as in maybe by a spirit or just in general, I guess, maybe? She just asked if they give anyone's ever been hurt on your watch, I guess. Absolutely. It's so actually I am one person that has been hurt and it's a second home to me. Um, it was one of my um, first times ever being um, physically touched at the location. Um, I've had people being emotionally manipulated that we've had to remove them outside the home. Um, and the biggest thing you guys will know, and I mean, Adam, you've done your research that it's not just the house that is haunted. It's the land as well. It's so the land. Yeah. Move, yeah, so if you remove yourself from the house and we go to the land, we have to have what's called a safe spot. So me personally, when I do tours, um, I have a fire going, and that's our safe spot. So if you need to remove yourself, I always have, um, you know, someone with me that's either at the fire, um, and they'll bring you out for safe zone. But me is in that general, your personal touch? I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off. I do that a lot. I'm sorry. Stop me if I am. No, but is that no, your personal <laughs> Does everybody – everybody do that or is that something you just do you're the fire thing is that something you personally do um not everybody does a fire um people that rent it out can do a fire but i've never attended a event that i think had a fire as a safe spot um but that's what you use it for almost like a witchcraft almost like almost like a, a bound in a good way but like a binding yep. sort of that's your safe zone i love that that because that yep. is wicked native area there's a lot of native americans in that area there's a lot and yeah. there's a lot of folklore and there's a lot of stories. Um, but on my watch, I've never had someone be physically injured. I've had people, you know, being emotionally drained, um, started hysterically trying, you know, so they have been, I'm going to say manipulated to a certain point. Um, but me myself have been physically attacked at the house and it was not my two where I was attending um, Chris Sutton. Uh, Daniel Class and Brian Cannell's events um, just prior to COVID. Um, and I know why it happened. Um, I was doing the hedge of protection upstairs, and we all heard what their own ears were coming. And you heard footsteps from the basement. Nobody was down there. And um, I felt like I was, um, I got punched in the chest, and it felt like I ate dinner and then swam in the pool. And um, I needed yeah. help being taken down. Um, and I did have like a bruise underneath my chest, um, near my stomach, um, you know, and I, I know why it happened. Um, but again, it's one of those things I always say is that you don't know what people brought with them or what they are doing with their own brains. Like our placebo, our brain is the most powerful organ in your body that we don't know what they're saying or what they're doing, even though they're in your group that can be manifesting something that you don't want. Um, and that is what happened that day. Um, wow. You know, I'm a big believer in that. In these, in these untapped psychic abilities that people have, like we only use like 13% of our brain. So that sometimes the percent we don't use, we don't realize we can manipulate. Sometimes like, oh, wow, that happened. I was just deja vu. No, you manifested it. You don't even realize. Wow, that no shit. Yeah. That's pretty wild. And you are a medium. Yeah. I forget to mention, introduce you that you are a medium. So you're in tune with all that as well, obviously. Um, yeah. Wow, that house knows you. That house likes you. That house is, it likes you, but it kind of hurt you. But I think it wants you, it wants to know that you're there or it wants you to know that they're there. I'm sorry. It seems No, like. I knew exactly what it meant. Absolutely. Um, and they gave me a subtle warning. But again, it was a huge group. We had three groups for how big the group was. Um, and if for me, when I do an investigation there, I like to keep my groups small, yeah. more intimate, because I don't think my personal opinion, hence that likes big groups. Yeah. Well, the attraction, the money and stuff, which is great. But you're like, I think you're like me, kind of like you. I think a lot of people kind of taint the evidence. And it's like you say, it's almost too much because you're trying to focus on the spirits. Next thing you know, are you picking up someone that maybe has cancer that's with you or, or something you could pick up on them? Like you say, people put out auras. I kind of like, I don't know, six, seven people, maybe eight people tops. I like even numbers. 
<laughs> yep. uh, but yeah, yep, even you. less really. <laughs> yeah, even less. I can go. I can do five or six and be chill with it. Um, so wow, that's cool. That's a big part of your life, along with everything else. I mean, that that house with with all those groups that decided to target you. That's the part that I find odd. Not odd, but intriguing. You know what I mean? Yep. Like why? Why me? I love everybody. Why me? <laughs> um, uh, but you know, oh, they uh, had their own reasoning. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a chat room going. We got a lot of people in chat. They're going to be asking questions as well. Um, Witchin, that's my girl, Heather Kimini. She says hi, and she just shared your cover photo. Yeah, she's been seen on uh, Discovery Plus Travel Channel, A and E, -E Prime Video, Dead Live. Um, Chelsea, you're, you're uh, Chelsea. I see. Yes, I knew I'd do it once. Chelsea, <laughs> you're, <good. laughs> um, you're kind of everywhere. I want to dive into the, the Statler Ghost Tour, or I, I pronounce that right? The old hotel, Statler? Yeah, Statler Hotel. Um, yeah. It's one of my favorite locations, and right now it's underneath renovation, which breaks my heart, but, you know, it's being restored. Um, Statler Hotel is one of the infamous locations down in uh, downtown Buffalo. And one of my dearest friends, Connor Hawkins, um, was the manager um, of that location prior to renovations. And it is built by Ellsworth Statler. And if you look from the top, if you ever Google Statler Hotel, Buffalo, New York, aerial view, if you look from the top, it's built in the letter E as of Ellsworth. Um, and it's got 18 floors. Um, wow. And the first, it's absolutely beautiful. It's been multiple things. They're down in the basement. It used to be called the Downtowner, which was like a nightclub years ago. Um, we have done tours of where Elvis Presley stayed. We had JFK Ooh. in the building. Wow. Um, the mob, mafia was in this building. Murder. Mafiosos. Where yeah. exactly, uh, Chelsea, where exactly is this? Is this by Buffalo? Is this more towards... Inward New York? This, I, is, this is actually in the city of Buffalo, New York. Oh, no shit. See, see, I'm, like I said, I'm a historian ghost hunter, but I don't fucking know it all. And I love, I'm going to, my girlfriend's right now next to me. She's already Googling. She's going to be uploading a picture <laughs> in chat because she's already, she's right on, she's right on cue with that shit. Um, my buddy, rest his soul, um, Gil, uh, Bill Koniak was a Buffalo Bills fan. And, and he used to brag mm. about how I'm to get up there. He must be a Buffalo fan. Hell yeah, I live next to the stadium. <laughs> oh, let's go, Buffalo. Real name <laughs> stadium, yeah. That's it, man. The fucking Bills Mafia right there. Hell yeah, I got my Zuba gear today in the mail. <laughs> oh, I told you to go off script a little bit. Good for you, good. Oh, Heather just shared a picture of the, uh, wow. It's like three <laughs> columns hotels. It looks yep. like the Cecil, but triple. Wow. Yes, yes. It reminds me of the Cecil Hotel, especially like when you go up. Like when we did tours, we took everybody to every floor. Um, the wow. 18th floor was like the workers' quarters. Um, and the original Statler was built for condominium and hotels. Um, and then really? the first floor in the mezzanine, which is like the balcony area, was it's all um, event centers, grand ballrooms, the rendezvous room. Um, yeah. And what is awesome is that we have pictures. So anybody that's on Facebook wants to go to Statler Ghost Tours and you find the group, you will see all of our photos of um, Elvis Presley in the building. And you can actually see like where I'm in pictures, where he stood for pictures. Oh, uh, oh you're like me. Yeah. You love the spot. Oh, I see how it looks yeah. like an E. That's how it's connected. The back of the building is a big lobby or big lane. It's like an yes. E. It's, yep, it's built. Wow. Yep, it's so cool. Um, and that's one of right the reasons why I love history. Oh, yeah, that's killer. Uh, Chelsea, I'm going to ask right in front of that. Is that the event center where Elvis might have played? There's like a big casino? Yep. or was it? Yep. yep. So um, right, um, if you look at the front entrance, it looks like there's mm -hmm. like a balcony, not a balcony, but a little cover. Um, when you yep. walk into there, you go right down a couple stairs, and that is where the downtowner was. So, and it's up and running. It's the, it's the rendezvous room, where that's where I held a lot of my events. And when we did stellar oh. um, psychic fairs. Um, and it's just really cool that it's the original flooring, you know, chandeliers have been restored, that Mark Croce, who did own the building prior to passing um, away in January 2020 in a helicopter accident, um, he restored it back to its glory and then was going to do all the floors. And due to his passing, we, you know, it did get sold um, to one of another building owner of the city 
and they're restoring it back to its glory. So as I'm, you know, oh. crying inside, you know, because whatever yeah. I know the Statler, but to see it in its beauty of why it was built, I am super excited to get back to you when it's done. Rumor oh, has it, amazing. it could be done by the end of the year. So we'll see what happens. Really? Re the, yeah. eight, wow. That well with yeah. Corona listing too, they can get better workers full time, get better. Yeah, I'd love yep. to go. Oh, Heather, just, Heather just shared a diagram of the inside. It shows all the, the measurements of the rooms. Well, good picture, Heather. Very cool. Um, yeah. Oh, and Betsy says hi. Betsy Williams uh, Brown Williams. She kind of rolls with the searchers, Shane Pittman and them. She said that she oh. drove to the. Yeah, she runs with them a lot. She does their merchant selling for for Shane and Josh. Um, she says she drove to the Statler on uh, in Buffalo on her way to Canada once. Betsy Williams, oh, Betsy Lou, the yeah. Uh, so well, wow. I'm hoping she loved it like we did. It's right near Canada. That's that's awesome that she made the pit stop. That's cool. And I know also uh, by Buffalo, of course, you got Niagara Falls. Um, oh, when me and Chris went through to Iowa a year back, we we went by Rolling Hills Asylum and Rolling mm, Rolling yeah, Field, East I think Bethany. Rolling. Yep, Rolling Hills. East Bethany. Yeah, Rolling Hills. Yeah, East Bethany. It was closed, but I got the outside, and I was like, I want to be in you. <laughs> I just, I love that <laughs> I stuff. You know what I mean? It was all cold, and but New York's a trip. I went through. Um, I forget the name of it. It was like Kill, Kill, uh, Kill, Killfish. Kill Fish. No, it was Phil Kick. Killfish or Fish Kill New York or something. Fish Kill. It was fish Kill New yes. York. Yeah, that's closest to the city. Yep. <laughs> wow, it was a big New prison. They had an Indian right. What a fucking weird name. That was pretty cool. Um, Welcome yeah. to New York. Pretty oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We're talking to medium Chelsea Gill. Um, we're going to get back into what she's into. Thank you guys all in chat. UFO Fred. Fred Richards is checking in, all you guys. Uh, Ken Bull's got a question. Thank you, Ken, for checking in. He asks, um, how does Chelsea keep your positive energy up when she has sad news, or do you have breakdowns sometime? Well, I mean, she is human, but I'll let her answer it. Um, You're correct. I am human. Um, but the, the thing I really go towards, and I think I might blow some people's minds, is I'm a very strong Christian. Even though my title is a psychic medium, I'm very strong in my faith. Uh, my faith will always be stronger than my fear. Um, so when I'm having a bad day, I go right to God. But I also have what's called my happy place. And I always encourage people to find that. My biggest thing is never put happiness in the palm of somebody else's hands, right? Because if something happens, what happens to you? You fall apart. So my happiness, besides, you know, positive affirmations, daily devotionals, or worship music, is Christmas. I will put on Hallmark Channel. I will put on my DVR. I'll put on, you know, <laughs> Christmas music. Right in you know, July, huh? I love it. That's it. Um, I love it. Elf the movie? The, who cares, right? Heck yeah. I mean, I was watching a Christmas movie this morning. No shame. Um, no. <laughs> but no, we have to find that happiness so that it's something that I do go towards. Do I have my days where I want to throw punch people or cry? Absolutely. Um, but <laughs> you know, and you got to release it. If you don't release it, you're going to blow apart. Um, but I always refocus my brain to go, okay, what is something I can control how I react? That's one thing I can control. So then I try to regroup. It doesn't always work as fast as I like. I'm not going to lie to you, but yeah. um, I do work on that. So, that's I awesome actually, I no, that's, it is an awesome question. I didn't mean to kind of joke at first saying she was human because of course, but I mean to deal with it. And honestly, I, I, that's very refreshing because I think, yeah, someone said I'm men because I myself, um, I grew up Catholic, of course, kind of the hard French Catholic, but I'm still very spiritualist and I still believe in God every day. I thank and praise God for the stuff I've been to. I question him sometime, of course, but I mean, I think that's what's gotten me into uh, even like right now, I'm the newest member of the Warren Legacy Foundation with, with uh, and Lorraine's yeah. grandson, Chris McKennell. And that's just my faith and just believing in stuff. And I think that's awesome that you do that because like you say, you want to throat punch people, you know, even Jesus, yeah. he knows, like, like they say, uh, you know, take no shit. But but do no harm, and I think that's what it comes okay. down to. And um, I, I like that. And I think that as far as happy spot goes, like right, you know, after the show gets done, I'm gonna probably honestly smoke a joint and watch wrestling. That's my thing on Friday night. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I do, and, and, that's my, and I don't. Yeah, and I don't judge anybody. You want to go watch Desperate Housewives or whatever? I'm not a big fan of it, but people like that shit, whatever. But at the same time, you res you have respect in the field, and when you when I go, son, I don't get all. I put, you know, obviously you put that stuff first. Someone just shared you're having a gallery reading coming up March 7th, 2022, Monday at 7.30 with Chelsea Gill. Uh, Chelsea Gill, I keep saying Chelsea. Thank you for sharing that in chat. Um, tickets are 30 bucks at the Banshee Irish Pub. 
uh, in yes. 257 Franklin Street, Buffalo, New York. That's killer. Making a personal yeah. appearance. And it's funny because Connor Hawkins, who ran Statler, opened up the Banshee. He's from Ireland. And it's pure Irish music, pure Irish oh. whiskey, pure Irish food. Him and his partners were all from Ireland. Um, and he's one of my dearest friends. So I'm happy to kind of give back to the Banshee. Um, I do a lot of different things here in the area to give back to the community. And I absolutely adore Connor. So those who want to come grab tickets, there's only a few left. Um, and, you know, come early, grab some curry chips. You won't regret it. And maybe a 7-7 because the whiskey is really good. Um, but yeah, I will be there um, with my bells and whistles on. I'm looking forward to it. That's very dope. You guys can look for that online. Of course, there's a picture in chat for those of you that aren't able to listen in chat. There is a link on Facebook if you get a chance. You have to open up two windows, though, because you can't listen in chat. But there's a picture in chat. And if you go to Chelsea, Chelsea's page, and it's all over the place, of course, the Banshee Irish Pub. That's very cool. And I love that you're into the Irish stuff. Heather went to Ireland a long time ago. She said it's amazing, the old castles and the food. Yeah, I mean, the whiskey. Yeah, that's cool. And to, to have like an Irish pub in upstate New York, there's nothing like that. That's killer. Um, Melissa Keen says, uh, Heather makes Adam job look easy because she keeps on sharing your info for me in chat. I don't have to... My little secretary, <laughs> she's all about it too. She's like, she's got her own show. I mean, maybe you, she'll have you on one day for Witch and Life Guide. Hers is on every other Thursday. She talks about gems and spells and all, all that good stuff, but she's very Ooh. much spiritual too. Yeah, that probably right up your alley. Um, but one thing that's that caught cool. your fancy, I remember a couple weeks so I shared a UFO with the Betty and Barney Hill, and you were all about it. Let's talk UFOs for a yeah. second. Dig that shit up. Oh my god, I am super obsessed with ufology, um, and that's not something many people know about me. So, hello everybody. I'm openly admitting I love ufology um, <laughs> because people think like you know you talk to dead people and that's all you do. No, there is so much more to the world. Um, oh. And my mom and I binge documentaries and. You know, Amazon Prime documentaries, Same. Netflix, Discovery Plus, and I am fascinated. And I think it's just because I do know we're not alone. I do. So wait a and minute. You're a, Catholic UFO, medium that believe, you're, you're a Catholic medium that believes in aliens? What the hell's going on here? I listen, and I don't burn down the <laughs> church when I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so did you see um, the Betty and Barney Hill thing on Shock Docs? Yes, I my mom and I are mind blown. Like her clothes were bloody. Oh my god, oh, the belly button and the abduction. Right. And when I was just with Brian Cano on Thursday, we were I took him to the banshee. Um, well, I saw you tagged him in my picture. Going. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, and, why did he die oh. nine years later with brain hemorrhage? You don't think the aliens fuck with his brain? Like he died nine right. years later. Like forty-two. How can like I don't care? It's one of those biggest things, and this is like a generic response to everybody i don't care if you believe in what i do or what i believe in but you have to respect it you have amen. to respect that and to know you know what do your own research amen like if you don't believe in it do your research um Preach. you may not find anything depending on what you're doing but oh my god like and i it's can't the film, though. oh my god it's like you film. google their name you you're gonna find it's everything a... yeah you look at these pictures and you can be your own judge, but you can get lost in it. That's so dope. You get so worked up with it because it's, it's exciting. Dude, but I want to talk about you it is so a, much. <laughs> it's a hole you go down. You look and then you keep on looking and four hours later, it's like TikTok. You keep swiping <laughs> and you find the funniest things and you end up down the hole. Well, I'm going to talk about some more stuff, but I got to talk about aliens a little bit more. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. have you have you personally seen anything you questioned, do you think? Um, yes. Um, so it was, gosh, I'm going to be 31. So this was years ago. And if you're ever in my area, the what's called the 90, which is like the highway, and that could take you across the entire state. So we were on our way to Rochester, which is about an hour and a half east of me, heading towards New York City, heading towards your way. And we were going to my uncle's house. I was young and I was in the front seat with my mom and we we're on the 90 and we look up and we see this bright light flying very low. And I remember putting my head down. because it was almost like the light was shining in our windows and this was nighttime. And my mom and I, part of my language, looked at each other like, holy shit, what the hell is that? It was not an airplane. It looked like a saucer, like an oval thing. And 
Wow. As quick as it, that is as quick as it was gone. And it showed up on the local news the next day. No way. Uh, oh, I've never had that. I can send you the article. So if, if she's next to you, Google UFO sighting Rochester, <laughs> New York. She's laughing. She's loving this. If she's hearing you getting popped up. She's loving it because we we love it. We we went. I went to the the, the placard, the Betty and Barney Hill placard. Yeah. Um. In, in Franconia, and then and you know what I did because I'm a stalker. <laughs> I, I I watched love the shock talk. <laughs> you do you do like my shit, which I respect because I try to block it from people because I'm worried people are gonna steal it because my brain I got ADD OCD and I I think people are out to get me sometime paranoid. But I trust you're not paranoid. Them, so you're being realistic. I, well, I appreciate it. I just I, I keep it from certain people that I for some reason will go there two weeks later and do a documentary YouTube about it. I'm like, huh, no one gave me any fucking props. I mean, I don't want to make money, but if everybody's gonna make many movies and money out of the places I go, then I want at least a shout out. That's all I'm asking. That's so it. now I put, acknowledgement. You know, that's it. So you know what I did between you and me and the 35 people listening or so? <laughs> I um I, I I pushed pause in the documentary where they have the yellow house. And it says oh, in Port you in? New Hampshire, the Yellow House. And I went there and I Google fucking Earth it and I've been there now. <laughs> and yeah. they both died inside, bro. They both died inside. Oh, I know it's the morbid, energy that's going to be in that building. Oh. I know, but I couldn't go in. It's a so private cool. residence now. I went to the outside. I did a live video. I think it's on my YouTube, actually. And I went outside. But it's a private residence. You imagine it's an apartment building. You imagine getting a room there? Oh. Oh, my God. I mean, oh. and all that stuff's great. I mean, oh, I mean, ET is fantastic, but we aren't alone. There's some shit. And you and your mother, you said, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. at the same time saw this? That's yeah. for your mother to go, no, come on, Chelsea. You No, 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 that's not. She was like, that's a fucking UFO, right? I mean. Yeah, like we just looked at each other like, holy shit. This is wow. not a U.S. aircraft. Ooh, um, Heather just dropped something. Witching in chat. New York is number Number five for the most UFO uh, 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 most UFO sightings in U.S. America, yeah, United States of <gasps> America. You guys are fifth most ranked. Well, up where you <gasps> are, aren't you? Like in the not is it Adirondacks? What's what's up in New York? New, upper State so, New York. That's so up. there is Adirondacks. That's four hours um, east of me. So if you were to look at the United States and you see New York and you see Lake Erie, I am yeah. literally fifteen minutes from Lake Erie. So I'm on the west side of the state. So Adirondacks are in the middle. So I'm right near Lake Erie in Canada, which would explain why, I mean, UFOs have been known to possibly be underneath the water. Isn't there a Lake Erie monster too? Isn't there like a sea monster in that thing? Yeah, the Loch Ness Monster technically out of Lake Erie. Oh. That's a whole other topic. I like that too. Cryptid. We're going to get like Chelsea it. Gill on a fucking vodcast because this is, this is we're <laughs> a half hour into it and I could talk for another three hours. Um, I want to promote a lot of your stuff because you're all across the board and there's questions yeah. coming in, but I want to talk about something that I think is really uh, nice. Anointed through Grace Incorporated. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that is my um, corporation here in New York. Um, a little backstory real quick. So I had my daughter at the age of 20. Um and she had a stroke during delivery. Um, so oh, I left my corporate job at my age of 22 to take care of her. And I then opened up my business and I have not looked back. So it's called Anointed Through Grace Incorporated, where it's encompassing all my private readings, the parties where I go to people's houses, um, the paranormal tours. Um, I master in integrative medicine. So I take care of people that um, have cancer autoimmune diseases and are mentally ill so i do work here at our local roswell and it's not roswell (laughs) ufology uh but roswell (laughs) um, cancer research center you wish Um, you wish right i wish it was um is it like kelly's kindness too because you're kind of yeah so that's kaylee's kindness yep so kaylee's kindness is um, a nonprofit for girls with cancer that i volunteer my time for um they are very near and dear to my heart um, so I do volunteer for them. And then Wings Flights of Hope um, is a nonprofit that my family utilizes because my daughter's medical care um, is not in New York State. Um, we are in Ohio and Pennsylvania, and we've been to 12 hospitals for her care. And Wings Flights of Hope volunteers their planes and their pilots to fly us for free wow. for our medical care and they wait for us. Um, oh, God so bless I have a you, everybody show. involved. 
Wow. Oh, Everybody you. in chat's blowing um, up with the God bless you. Wow. You're amazing. Uh, that shit that that shit. I mean, obviously all the A&E stuff's great, but this is stuff that this is stuff that means something. Sure, ghost hunting on TV's fine and Danny. Zach Baggins, I really go care less about him. But this it, you need to be known. This is what needs to be known in life. You, you seriously, it's a pleasure to have you on today. I don't mean to keep cutting you off. I'm just like so no hyper. No, thank nah, you. Yeah, because I'm feeling it. I've been through it. a lot of shit. And 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 what you've been through as an early mother, and then the trials and tribulations of your poor child. How is she now? Um, she's doing okay. Um, so we, she has what's called herbs palsy, which is like a sister form of cerebral, but cognitively she's great. Um, she just has physical problems. So she's got permanent nerve damage in her spinal cord up to her brain, which makes her right arm. Um, not really function properly, and her equilibrium is always off. So we still do um, th 21 therapies a week for her. She's in fourth grade. She's going to be 11, um, you know, because there is no cure for what she has. So when people, you know, like, oh, how do you do it? I I get my beauty rest. Just kidding. Um, you know, I, but I, I, I'm learning to balance. You, you know, my people do come first, but my family comes first. Um, I tell you, you, you just made me laugh and stop me from crying. You got me this big bearded dude crying over here because <laughs> you're one of God's angels. No, seriously, that's rough. Um, you know, I mean, Heather had a kid at a young age and of course dealing with trials, tribulations is rough and you do so much for others, not to mention your own. I had no idea. And I've been Facebook friends with you for almost two years now and you don't glow. Here's my, you know, you really don't. You know, you, and everybody has no idea. God bless you. Everybody's loving you. Um, <laughs> that's you real. No, that's real, Chelsea. That's real shit, dude. I mean, like you say, paranormal's great. And you know, obviously, Hinsdale House is fantastic. But this is your daughter. Um, does she know Mama? Mama's a medium. Does she know Mama talks to the dead? Yep, and she is the tenth generation. Um, no, so I'm thankful. Yeah, so she's more powerful than I am, um, and I absolutely love it because. She, I always say, it sounds bad, God crosses your path with people for certain reasons. And I always said, she wasn't sent to me for me to take care of her. She was sent to me for her to take care of me. And, um, wow, she love that attitude. My, okay. Right? She's my mini, wow. um, looks just like me, she's sassier than ever. She's not get that from me. Haha. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she is, uh, she's very gifted. Um, she's very talented, wicked smart, wow. too, which I am thankful for. So, she's and a, Dan, she's you know, she loves Dan. Professor and, X. Yeah, right? You, 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 see, I mean, you must have guided her to an extent, though. I mean, she didn't just come to you one day or no? No. So she started, um, her first journey was, um, if anybody has ever watched the movie Heaven is for Real or Miracles from Heaven, um, those are two movies if you have not watched, I highly encourage um, she was watching one of them and, um, it's about the boy that is appendix birth and his father's a preacher and, um, they do not talk about, um, Jesus Christ. They just call him God because it's obviously it's very confusing father, son, the Holy spirit for a lot of people, including children. And mm -hmm. I never taught her the Trinity. She's just God. Cause you can't get to God without going to the son. They're all one thing. So Amen. Yep. During during Absolutely. this movie, um, she came to me. We we're outside and we were watching it. And she goes, Mommy, you know, you don't got to be sad for me anymore. God is my doctor. And it was during our roughest moments with her. We were in Boston, Massachusetts for her medical care. And they were telling us, you know, permanent damage. And it was a very emotional time. And I cried because she's like, God's my doctor. And at yeah, the end of this, um, sure. you guys can Google this too. If you Google, um, Heaven is for real God painting. And it's about, this is a true story about a boy that went to heaven, saw God and painted him. And Sydney, my daughter, looked at the picture and said, that's Jesus Christ, but he's not in a hay bale. And it looks nothing like what me and you grew up with, with God and, you know, the Bible shows us. The new and improved of Jesus Christ. Um, and that's wow. what I knew saw God. Um, wow. And now she, she paints and she draws. Um, God she bless her little, angels. Wow. Yeah. Oh, put her on the phone. I need her as a guest. That's kidding. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, that's uh, you know what's funny because they say that Jesus was built in that image of someone. Looks like the lead singer of Deep Purple in a way. 
but it, yep. it's it's all metaphors and it's and, and these people that have these near death experiences and of course you being a medium you've touched on this a lot right when when did you and I, i'm going to go all over the board if you want to touch back to something yeah. please do um it's just my brain yeah. but when did when did you come into this did you, around her age too yeah, so at the age of seven, I had my first premonition. Um, it was Columbus Day, and the only reason why I remember that is because anytime we had off for school on Mondays, I slept at my grandmother's house on Sunday night. So Sunday night, I slept over her house, woke up in the morning, and she's got Monday morning bowling league. If you remember, all grandparents did those bowling leagues. And I remember getting in the car with her, and I just had this feeling, like my body just felt like something was wrong. And it got stronger and stronger. And while she's bowling, I started crying and I looked at her, I'm like, you're going to die, Graham. And she's like, what? You know, and called my mom saying, you need to come pick up your daughter. Da, da, da. And a week later, she was in a car accident and she was severely injured and that sensation went away. So we started keeping a journal. My mom's kept the journal since the age of seven. Um, my grandmother did not die, but she was severely injured. So I then had to pick up on, okay, what sensation is this? So over the years, um, I said I want to become a cop. So my degree actually is in a master in criminal justice and a minor in psychology. And I work on cold case, cold case and missing people files here in Buffalo, New York. Um, so I do use my degree just as a psychic medium. Um, but that's where it all started, you know, 23 years ago. Um, which I am grateful for the gift, you know, every single day, um, because without the gift from God, I wouldn't be here to help everybody, including myself, you know, because when I help wow. you, I, help, I feel the love for myself, which I'm thankful for. Um, so yeah, 23 years ago, sure. I started. That's crazy. And you just keep going a lot of it. That's a lot of independent structure and faith too, to not spread yourself so thin and give yourself just enough. But King asks, how can you be the son of God and God at the same time? Well, not so much. Jesus is God as well or whatever. It's more like a metaphor King. A lot of it, like God didn't even have a son. Like God doesn't have sperm. God is like a head. God. Yep. Like it's beyond Correct. comprehending, I guess, so to speak. I don't know. I don't want to get into that because Jesus, I'll be in another 12 hour discussion. And I know. Mushroom. No, but I agree with that. <laughs> it's a metaphor. I love it. Yeah, they, a lot of a lot of the Bible is even even Adam and Eve. Like there was no dude named Adam. The first name wasn't guy. Hey, I'll name myself Adam. You know, there was yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah to an extent was like Las Vegas ish. No one. Yeah. Anyway, let's. Anyway, but I know what you're saying, and and I think incorporating that just just the whole faith in this. We're not supposed to know all of it. We're supposed to just trust in Him. That's the whole point. Correct. So that's the faith. You know, yep. Yeah, that's uh, and that's very very. Um, you know, um, like you say, that's a blessing. I don't say it's tragic. Um, your daughter's here with us for a reason to teach you and to teach everybody. And she's, yeah, she's your Phoenix Gray, man. She's going to surpass you. And that's what every parent wants is, is their kid to have a better life than them. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, we're talking to Chelsea Gill. Uh, definitely a pleasure to have her on the show today. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about, um, I don't know. I guess we've, we've kind of touched on everything. Let's talk about something kind of fun. Let's go off subject. You guys... Feel free to ask some questions. You guys are all tearing up still in chat. <laughs> you little yeah. sore sports. I love you. I love you guys tuning in. John Anthony, Nicole, Mike Davis, George, Witch and Melissa Keene, all you guys, Betsy. Um, what, what's your bucket list, Chelsea? Where, where's a place you'd like to go that you have in Salem or New Orleans, California? So I've been to Salem, um, which I love. But I, if you really want my honest opinion, I'd like to go to Alcatraz. To where? Oh, Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Yeah. The Alcatraz um, Island. Yes. Yes. I'm very intrigued on going to locations of where history once stood. Not saying that new buildings aren't fun, but if I can touch the wall where John Hancock signed his name because he was there, what yeah, energy buddy. is imprinted in that wall? Yeah, like, buddy. What that's, is there? That's... Um, it's I call that history it's porn. It's something about the door handles that the witch hunters touched, or 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 going to New Orleans where the vampires possibly walked, or 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 yeah. Alcatraz where the Birdman was, the island where when San Francisco has earthquakes, it doesn't get touched because it's built on a rock. People don't know that Alcatraz is the place to go when there's an earthquake. So much history, yeah. and you and you being a medium and a crimeologist, you'd have a fucking field there. You'd be fucking so drained there. <laughs> oh my god, I know. 
I know, but that's, and if I had to choose like a country to go to, it would definitely be Ireland. My family's from Ireland and I'm half, basically half Irish, half Italian with a little bit of Russian. Oh, oh, <laughs> shit. Um, yeah. but, you got 5% uh, Italian and 40% Gil, Irish. It's yeah. funny, right? Gill is shortened from a Gillicuddy. So, no um, way. Def- yeah. Yeah. So definitely straight, you know, from Ireland. Um, so I would definitely love to go there, but if I had to go somewhere, I'm going to consider it local. It'd definitely be California. Even though that's a fucking haul. <laughs> I know it is one side of the country to the other, but still within reason, right? You're not crossing the well, ocean. Well, you know, I'm going to say something right now and I don't, and I, I literally mean it. I'm not just saying it to bullshit because this is going to be live and YouTube and all that bullshit. I literally mean it. You ever come to Maine, if you've been or not, I don't know. You come to Maine, you look up me and Heather, we're going to take you out and show you where witches are buried. I'll show you where some priests Listen, are buried. I've wanted King to. Um, so that's on my list. That if I, that's not even a bucket list. That's like me just getting up in my car and I'm coming to Maine. Uh, and we're going to explore. <laughs> uh, so I definitely want to plan that because you're only like six, seven hours from me. Really, upstate New York. That sounds about right. Uh, yeah, that's a, yeah. Once you get when yeah, once you get past Mass, you're good. New Hampshire's pretty pretty cake, and Maine's pretty much just one way. You're just coming in or out. It's there's not a lot. You once you get to Maine, you're like, wow, no billboards, no overpasses, one exit. That's it's very simple. Maine is so chill, dude. Oh. Yeah, like it's that. really it's. I honestly, people want to leave Maine. I'm like, I fucking love it. We got graveyards dating back <laughs> to the 1600s. I mean, how could you not? But being in New York, your East Coast. I mean, you got a lot up there too. You know, if yeah. someone was coming to New York, would you, like, have you been to Sleepy Hollow yet? I have not. That's way lower, though. That's down by like uh, Staten Island, right? I think down by Amityville. Yeah, and stuff. so you're you're technically the city, so you're on the other side of the state, which is about five hours from me. Yeah, you're in the what I would which call the so good crazy. part of New York. <laughs> yeah. Um, hell yeah! Okay. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah! Uh, Paranormal King Raw. We talked to him pre-show. Thanks, Ross. I love you so much. He asked a question. Is Chelsea part of a paranormal team? Hmm. So I don't see um, so. So I'm I so yes and no. We don't utilize it. So Greater Western New York Paranormal Society, which is like Dan's group. Um, I once was, but now I just on my own identity. So if we ever get back to like if people are like, hey, we want people from Greater Western New York, we'll get together, you know, and we'll do something. Otherwise, I'm just my own identity. Well, yeah, I like that. I like that you do readings. Um, we still got about 20 minutes left or so, but I got to ask, um, can people reach you to do personal readings or card readings or anything like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can head what to my that? website, Chelsea. Yeah, ChelseaGillBuffalo.com. Um, and it has all information on there right now. Um, right now, I have a seven-month waiting period for private reading. Um, wow. so I'm booking right now, November to December. Yeah. The wow. blessing and a curse at the same exact time. And people <laughs> ask, is this your full-time job? It is. You know, I do about 40 to 50 readings a week, um, between wow. parties and private sessions. Um, and that doesn't even include, you know, doing a paranormal event where I'm channeling dead people oh, in a haunted location or your dead people, you know? Wow. Um, but yeah. I feel more privileged. The more you talk, the more I'm like, damn, I should have paid her to come on. <laughs> oh, you're, no. <laughs> no, no, just you're very, it's very like you're you like the, people have excuses to not do things. And you're between raising your family and just doing everything else. You're across the board. It's um, also two guys, um, www.chelseagillbuffalo.com, um, all one word, C-H-E-L-S-E-A-G-I-L-B-U-F-F-A-L-O. Dot com. Um, you'll find more info there as well for her. She does have a Facebook page, but she's loaded with friends, and uh, she doesn't always have time for every individual. Obviously, time's busy. You've been featured on A and E. What'd you do for A and E? For those that don't know, um, so I've been on most terrifying places in America, um, for oh, cool. Unnatural World, which is Hinsdale, um, and I was on Paranormal Lockdown, um, the Statler City episode. Um, so both of those have been featured on a e Travel and Discovery Plus. Check those out, guys. Check out every episode, but check out those ones for sure because uh, yes. Ms. Ms. Gill's the real deal. And uh, as you can tell, she's one of the one of the good ones you want to support. What have you done? Uh, for, let's, let's plug the Travel Channel. What have you done on the Travel Channel for those that haven't seen it? 
Um, so Travel Channel, um, I've done a few different things, uh, most terrifying places in America. Um, I've reenacted for a few different um, events here for Buffalo that was here, you know, Destination Fear came on by. Um, it, but one of the biggest things that we did have, um, Statler has been on a few episodes. So either you're going to see me on camera as myself or I'm reenacting for something um, just to, you know, have people run that floor because people are petrified. There's a difference between like Hinsdale and Statler. I know it sounds weird, but Statler is loving and fun and full of history where Hinsdale is full of dark, you know, and it could be. I was going to say Hinsdale is a little darker. I think the native yeah. land is what makes it a little bit um, uneasy, unsettling, maybe is right, maybe the right word. It's a little dark because it's, it's kind of plain Jane too. It's nothing spectacular. When you see it, it's not like, whoa, like the Shining House, but it's very much alive. Every time I see groups go, they're like, oh, shit, Shanley House, Hins I mean, not Shanley House, Hinsdale House, Hinsdale House, Danny Klaus, fucking, it's pretty active there on, on the regular, it seems like, for Dan. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've had days where it's been calm, that we get some things, and then other days where it's like, whoa, duck, you know, because it's almost like something's <laughs> flying off the wall. Um, you know, it could be polar opposite of uh, each other, but absolutely. That's so funny. Heather just shared a picture of you at Iron Island um, Museum. Oh, yeah. That's in the city, too, of Buffalo. Historical site. Ooh, tell me yeah. about that. I'm filming. I'd like to know that. Um, so that? that is in Lovejoy, which is um, considered Buffalo, New York. Um, and it is a building that is now a museum um, full of the history of Buffalo. But it was a funeral home, and it was donated to Linda um, and her mother, Marge, because of all the nonprofit work that they did. But it was a funeral home, and there were remains that were left behind. There was 18 oh, of them. Oh and um, I was just there with my friends on Saturday because I did tours, a couple tours prior to that. And we had poor opposite. Like, I had one weekend where we heard the children play because it was a church, too. So, like, you have the... Sunday school kids that you can actually hear. I kid you not. You can hear them. They're playing. I just got a heat the rush. Weekend, my whole head. I'm like, right? whoa, that's oh, crazy. And then it was, the so it was, weekend, it was a school, then a funeral home. It was a, it was a school yes, first. Yes. Or then a, yes. Why? Oh my God. Please, don't listen. I have no idea, but you can look at the building. You can tell with <laughs> the church prior to a funeral home. Um, and the following weekend was very dark and heavy. Like it was polar opposite. So with me, if I'm going to do an event, I need to figure out what's going on here. And my friends and I came back and it was really cool that we got, you know, some more answers and Linda and Marge are amazing people, which I am grateful for. Um, and I'm doing an event, two events in October, October 22nd, which is sold out already. Um, and then the 29th, I think I have four tickets left. Um, for the events and you know there's 30 tickets you know I kept them a little wow. open and I'm shocked that they're already sold out um, but that's definitely a location that can be rented um, so if you want ironislandmuseum.com um, you can read about the history you can see pictures um, you can schedule your own event there you know do your own little tour they do public events there um, it's definitely a location that has heat and it's clean like you don't find that often with haunted locations. Yeah, no, um, no, so no. St. Albans like is pretty me. dirty. <laughs> yeah, um, there's some places don't clean yeah. up that well. Um, yeah. Nicole asked a question. I'm sorry to cut you off. Nicole, she asked a question a couple of times, and I want to get to her. Yeah. I know she wanted to know after. It's funny. It actually ties in with this. After these gallery readings, especially possibly excessive ones, do you feel like really drained? You're going to take like a couple of days to a week off. Yeah, so it depends on the location. So Banshee, which is coming up, there's like 60 to 80 seats um, where I typically try to take the following day off to kind of recoup because I do get tired. Um, where the Wings Flights of Hope event in July, that's 200 people. So I take off at least three days after the event just because I need to recoup. Um, if I'm not up to par, I'm not doing my job. Um, wow. so I need to make sure my body gets back and even though I'm grounded, you know, and I have my crystals and I pray if you, people think to themselves, Oh, well, that's just an easy job. You run your own business. I want you to put yourself in my shoes. I channel your energy and your dead people plus your mental illnesses. If you're at my medical center. So not only am I channeling for people that are deceased, plus your issues, 
plus your split personality disorders, and I'm not supposed to be tired. Hey, wow. wow. Like, I'm going to be tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, what does a medium yeah, to do? Is what, what, is, what is your go-to? What do you, what do you fiend on? Do you get pizza? What do you get? A coffee? Do you take a nap? Do you take energy drinks? Let's talk a little bit. What's your favorite type of food? What's your go-to? The recharge. So, so my, if we're going to go off, like if you're like, hey, Charles, I'm coming to the city. We're going to go to the <laughs> We're going to grab some food. I'm taking you to craft beer because I love my IPAs and some chicken Ooh. wings. Yep. Um, but <laughs> if we're just going, like if I'm working that day, I have water or I smoothie or I juice. Um, I'm Smart. considering, I'm very healthy just because I'll be honest, like I have been sick. Um, and I'll share my story. Like I am now 87 pounds down. Um, I got very sick due to stressors and that's why I'm very mindful, extra mindful now that if people okay. don't align with me, it's okay. You know, and I got very sick. I gained weight. Um, I had autoimmune diseases because of that. So whenever I do work like a big thing, I have a juice and I have water. Um, you know, I have chocolate because I have low prep pressure. Welcome to the world of that. Um, so I do have chocolate or peanut butter. Um, but all right, like, if it's just me and we want to go out, you know, I'm not a big wine drinker. I'll have a seven, seven, but I want some craft beer. I want some French fries. I want some chicken wings, maybe some pizza because they have great pizza here. Um, oh, but if you're shit. At home, give me some spaghetti and meatballs. My grandma. Oh, there's the Italian girl. Spaghetti, yep. Heather, yes. spaghetti yes. and meatballs. Pasta. <laughs> you, gotta have it. you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You have over come and triumphed over so much girl god damn even heather's like she's a warrior like it's true like <laughs> dude you're one of the good ones in the fight like you may roll with like daryl and the ghost hunters and all this a e dudes and all them and shout out to all the guys they're all great people but you're very much like yeah you know that's cool um if you're come to me we'd love to take you out and get you some fried clams or something and go check out some ocean waves oh, yeah. and where steven, yeah. where steven king grew up in fresh. durham Give me some scallops <laughs> if I'm on the ocean. Well, what, oh, you'd love it. Bacon wrapped scallops. And you can hear the wind slap and you can taste the salt water in them. Heather goes, New York oh. style pizza is the best. No, she's right. New York pizza does, but Maine's got the Maine's got come on. Maine's got the, the uh seafood. But lot but mm, pizza. They oh, sure yeah, do. For sure, though. The New York's got the um with that for sure. Thank you, Nicole, for asking the question. I'm sorry I took you so long to get to. Um, do you use jet? I'm gonna ask this question. I'm sure a lot of the girls and probably any of the witches listening are asking. Um, do you use gems or sage or anything silly like that? Your holy water or what do you use to um, ground yourself so, fire? Um, I use essential oils, so I use frankincense, which is in the Bible. Um, uh, if it was good for Jesus, Amen. it's good for me. Yep. Um, I'm yep. Yeah, so I'm a reverend, so I carry holy water with me. Um, sage gives me headache, the smell of it. Um, but Ooh. I have um, a very, so I, along with my low blood pressure, I have a very bad reaction to chemicals. So, like, I can't do ca um, candles. I can't do perfumes anymore. Um, so it's the smell of it, and I don't know if it's because it's a plant that's being burned. I know it sounds weird, but it's a plant that's being no. burned. Um so I'll use oils. I do have crystals, you know, uh, snowflake obsidian, a tiger's eye, clear quartz, rose quartz, um, lapis lazuli. Um, I will never wear anything around my neck. I keep it in my pockets. I get nervous of getting choked. I get nervous something's yep. going to pull it and try to choke me or get caught on something. And I'm yep. stuck the closer you are to the Lord, the clo you know, the closer the devil is to you. So I you never really, Wow. You beat by the drum, like you say. You don't. You wouldn't think it, and I, I have no clue. You're a reverend. That's amazing. <clears throat> but I, yeah, I, 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 I really. You got to respect God. Otherwise, if you don't believe in God, then why are you chasing ghosts? That's our souls. If you're an atheist, you don't yep. believe in souls. You're in the wrong division. You're just doing it for money, and you're fake. If you don't believe yep. in God, you're, you're a phony. I'm sorry, dude. Ghosts are our souls, brother. We are energy. Yeah. And I want to know, my mom died. And when I died in a car accident, I died last year, about May 5th, actually. It's coming right up. Mm -hmm. uh, I died for 38 seconds in a car. My mom told me to get out in her car. I'm going to cry. Fuck. Anyway, um, I'm going to see my mom again because I know I have faith and she had faith. And I'm going to believe in that. And anybody that doesn't like it, you know, I don't care because I, that's what keeps me going. And I, yep. and, and I pass it off to you for not being scared to share that, especially with what you're going through. Um, is um, we got about 10 minutes left. We can go a little bit over. Is there anything you'd like to touch on that we haven't yet? Um, the one thing I do want to talk about is dead live. It's the new TV show um, that Ooh, I'm part yes. of. Which, 
Thank so, you. So Dead Live, um, which I am honored to work beside Daryl Marston from Ghost Hunters um, and Mike Diamond from Paranormal Warehouse and Omar Gosh from Omar Gosh TV is YouTube. I love him. Um, Very cool. There's, he's so funny. Um, I'm he very is. blessed and honored to work beside, you know, Daryl and the crew. Um, so this is a live interactive TV show. This is live stream um, really? that um, you can tune in. Um, you can subscribe or you can tune in like just for that, you know, especially you could do a dollar 99 just for that day. But one Ooh. of the best things about this is that I, one thing everybody wants, you know, should know about me unless I've ran that location. I choose not to know anything about the location that I go to, even for an event, because I'm a psychic medium. I need to sense my own and see what's going on to compare to newspaper articles, et cetera. So we are going to what's called the House of Wills in Cleveland, Ohio, which I've heard about. I know nothing about. So what they're going to do is they're going to put a blueprint out of the location. And it's like the game Clue. So this is like really cool that oh, awesome. you get to choose. Like I want Chelsea in the boiler room with a candlestick, you know, so you can have to oh, that's cool. me, you know, in the basement, which is a recorder and I will have camera crew with me. So it's all live. It's all, you know, tuned in. So we have our producer, you know, all of our workers and everybody's amazing. So it's June that's 11th. Cool. Um, you can go to paranormalwarehouse.com backslash dead live. Um, and you can see all the information, um, or you can just go to my Facebook page. You know, it's on my website too. Um, it is going to be one hell of a time and I'm super excited to be working with, you know, Daryl and Mike and Omar, um, cause they are amazing individuals. Oh, that's dope. I follow it now. I'll definitely subscribe. You guys got like 103,000 something people. That's cool. So real life, we're like Chelsea basement fucking bring the record or, or addict or what have you. And you yep. just do it. Right. Well, it's like real life video games, so to speak, but it's like, yeah, wow, that's and you see everything. So if you see something like oh. I will not have an earpiece, but my cameraman will. And if you're like, oh, my oh. God, I see something behind Chelsea. They will say, Chelsea, Adam says there's something behind you. So then I can use no the record. Like, OK, you know, Adam says you see somebody who is this person. Um, so oh. you are there with us. It's like a 3D interactive event. It's really cool. That's really cool. So this is kind of a trial too. And this obviously if this works, we'll do it more places. Obviously, you're just getting yeah. started. Um, this is kind of the this could be the new wave. I could be broadcasting you guys the new wave, man. Check the show out in five years. Be like, holy shit, you've said it first. Yeah. Um, Chelsea Gill. Um, sweet. We can go a little bit over, boss says. We got about five minutes, well, three minutes left. We can go about five if okay. you want. It's been about an hour. Okay. Um, any okay. plugs, anything else too? That that's killer. Para, uh, where, uh, paranormal warehouse dot com it's the one and only it's right on facebook hundred and three thousand. please subscribe follow them follow chelsea gill follow what she's doing she's doing a little tour road tour now that corona's lifted um you plan on going on tour or anything doing any little things up north maybe or, or even wherever out west so um i've been asked for a few different things and um my agent you know fumary uh promotions um has asked me okay like i've been asked to go to um Oh, God, what's the new TV show? Is it My Haunted Town? Haunted Town Horror or Hometown Horror? It's oh, yes, I see. Yes. It's in Montana. Um, yep. I've been asked to go there. Um, I like to stay close to home, which is the Northeast. Um, so I, me personally, I have been discussing many things up in the Northeast, so that's why I'm hoping to get to Maine. Um, but I'm a little bit of everywhere. So my next, I have an event. Um, I'm in Indiana. In June, I'm at Fort Wayne at the Bell Mansion with amazing individuals, Ooh. you know, Jeff Walker and Angie. I'm an all-volunteer. So I'm with Kristen Lumen from Ghost Hunters and Maria Verdecci. And then um, I'm at Ghetto Show. And then I'm in West Virginia at the hospital in Old College Hill, which I love. Um, oh, an amazing yes, location. Fucking list of mine. Oh, right. son of a bitch. Tanya and Charlie are amazing people. So if they're tuning in, I love you guys. Um, but I'm going to be back with all the you. ghost hunters, Mustafa, Kristen Lumen, Daryl and I, Mustafa's good um, people. and then I have, um, I will be having a new event announcement, um, at the bell mansion come October with a new person. Um, so it'll be announced soon. Um, that's, not, that's then, not far from you. Ohio's right next door from where you are really. Yeah. So, right? um, yeah. So Cleveland, like, so I am an hour and 15 minutes from Erie, Pennsylvania. And yep. I am Michigan two hours Lake. from Ohio. 
Yeah. Yep. They so share the, the lake. 90s. They have the Christmas tree house there. Yes, they do. Or the Christmas story house, I mean, with the leg lamp. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Yep. <laughs> That's the yep, list, too. Yeah, yeah, I drove through there. I got the leg lamp house. Fuck, let's go to the Christmas story house. Right. They're closed, though. Shit. Oh, uh, no. But Fuck yeah, I have a lot of stuff going up. Um, That's so true. Um, and you can follow it on my Facebook, you know, Chelsea Gill. Click follow because I'm at my maximum of 5,000. Um, but a lot of my stuff is public, so you can see it. You can comment. Um, my website has all of it. Um, you know, and I'm just very thankful, Adam, for, you know, allowing me on today to talk to you and talk to everybody that had questions. You know, I like, I'm the talkative one, if you haven't realized. I'm fun, you know. Oh, no, I feel like cutting you off because, no, I get hyper. A lot of my, a lot of my guests are quiet and you actually like to talk, which is cool, but I love to ask questions because I'm not just going to sit here and just play with buttons and just go, oh, no, 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 I got a guest. I love talking to people and getting to know them. That's just who I am. And we both talk and that's cool. I got one more question real quick. Uh, Canada, uh, King yep. wants to know if you've ever been to Canada. My boss, So Trost. I am part Canadian. So yes, um, my family owns Shirkston, Shirkston Shores. Um, so no which is just out of um, Toronto. I haven't been to Canada, you know, since COVID. Um, but yeah, I've been to Canada. Just not for ghost hunting though, but my family is still there. Um, just not for ghost hunting. But yes, I've been uh, to Canada. Tr- Eh? <laughs> I went to Montreal after high school. My family's from St. George, Bejean, Began, my last name. Okay. But I went to Montreal and I lost my wallet at a strip club back when I was like 20. I don't even remember. <laughs> it, was like, it was like 18 years ago. You know what I mean? Holy cow. But I remember everybody goes, oh, American. I had a Slipknot shirt on. And I'm like, how do they know we're American? And my buddy looks at me. He goes, we're kind of noticeable, pal. And they all knew all the Montreal people. Knew, but they had old churches and all the old bums were staying out in front of the churches you could just walk in them and then everybody was singing in canadian in these old old 1800 churches montreal's pretty wild um Very but that's cool man yes. I, yeah chelsea gill thank you so much for your time um one of the definitely i look forward to this all week i'm gonna get you on the vodcast and maybe i'll Absolutely. get um daryl on too we'll be more visual and you guys can bring on stuff and uh this was fun um anything I else real quick it. we have a couple minutes left. we have about three minutes left anything else at all you want to talk? Um, um, what are you gonna do when you come to Maine? Besides, look us up. You're gonna come to Maine, right? <laughs> um, well, there oh, is no, yeah. So there is a few different locations um, that I want to go to of UFO sightings. That is 100 percent accurate because oh. we don't have too many. We have a lot of known stuff here, but not like oh, it landed in the field, not on the highway. You know, right? Um, but I think the Exeter, New Hampshire the UFO here, festival. Yeah, well, it's funny because um, there's a lot of things that I've been wanting to get to, and then COVID came in like a freaking wrecking ball. So yeah. everything, you know, this yeah. year is like everyone's getting back on their feet. Um, so I'm hoping mm-hmm. to get to that. But Maine is like the area where I just want to feel the energy. It's one of, you know, the oldest states. I want to see what it's all about. You oh, know, me and my girl, Witchin, will take you. We'll take you to, uh, we'll get clams and some Irish whiskey where Maine became a state in 1820 in Freeport, literally next door to L.L. Bean, the, the, the real L.L. Bean to open 24 hours a day, every day. And it's uh, Jameson Tavern and it's an Irish tavern and it's where Maine's papers oh. were signed in 1820 to be free from Massachusetts. And they have the best fried oh, clams oh. I think I ever had in whiskey. And it'd be my treat to bring you out. So you're recorded, so you have to do it now. <laughs> That's it. Uh, like, I say it, I mean it. I love it. Oh, I like that. Good people. Uh, but but uh, they're giving me the boot. So thank you so much. I'm going to get you on again. My vodcast and even the guest on the show, uh, Chelsea Gill. She's on. All over the place, guys. Just Google her. Um, thank you for being my guest, and I appreciate you coming on. And I hope you have a great weekend. And um, I hope you take care. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Take care. All right. God bless and have a great night, Chelsea. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. This is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknown.